This is Gumby Freeland for Sports Kita MMA, and joining me today is Maria Agapova, who fights Jillian Robertson at UFC Vegas 60. That fight is on September 17th. So first of all, Maria, thank you so much for taking the time this deep into training camp. Thank you so much for inviting me on this interview. So happy. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I want to start by talking about the fact, you know, obviously you, you've been out for a little while. You're supposed to fight back in July, supposed to fight Yi Jing yeah. Liang. I, I know there were some rumors or at least some out media outlets had reported that it was a knee injury. How, how bad was that? And in, in how was the recovery for that? You know, it's bad and I still need surgery. So after my fight, I will do the surgery. But my life situation is very bad right now. That's why I can't go to surgery before this fight because, you know, I work like bouncer right now at the club and no one gives a shit about me, honestly. So, and after I get hurt and my sponsor didn't want to sign with me and I just get bouncer work and working with injury and I got to go fight with injury and I believe in myself. I believe I can win still with this injury. Still, I believe I can win. And I want to do this and just don't give people free stuff from myself no more. Because I get to this point because I help a couple losers. And I was thinking that I help being them successful. But no, it's not work like this. I become a loser because I try to help a losers. And I, I just get broke and I have to work like all my camp, like bouncer. But, you know, this thing still help me because I feel this regular person life. Like you go in on a regular job and earning the regular money. And of course, I will appreciate my money that I get from UFC more this time. Because I realized like it's not a lot of people get money like me, like I do. i making really big money in UFC. And next time I have to invest them. I have to manage my money well. I shouldn't help people that I barely know who show up in my life when I'm good, when I have money. they showing up with some pity story and I feel bad for them and give them my money. But I shouldn't do this because I see right now that I was helping people and after I get hurt, after I get broke, no one gives a shit about me. And that's what hurts me, but it's life lesson. It's hard life lesson. I learn it, and I still want to go to fight. I want to fight, get all my money, get the surgery, and after a while again, I will come back already on next year. So it's gonna be my last fight in this year, and I'm not gonna fight long time because injury was serious. Injuries was serious, but I still go through good camp. I feel good, and I'm ready to fight and change my life because I'm tired of working a regular job. My job is actually good. I love my job. I work like volunteer in FLs, that club in Fort Lauderdale. And I love my job. But of course, I want to enjoy life. <laughs> hmm. I don't want to work. I already work in my life in Kazakhstan and here too. And I want to just have my money with me and enjoy my life. You know, I think I deserve it. And I just want to go to this fight to change my life again because I make so good money and I didn't invest it anywhere. I just spend on losers. I spend my money on losers and that's it. Like, I end up in a situation, but this fight, I want to go, I want to fight, I want to win and change my life because I don't want to live like this no more. I'm tired. I'm tired working for food. That's it. Well, I'm, I'm certainly sorry to hear that. Now, I, I did want to ask you, you said the, the knee situation is really bad. Has, has it limited you all in camp? I don't want you to give away, obviously, too much about, you know, what that injury looks like and, and how much surgery is going to be needed. But has it limited you in what you can prepare for or what you can do in, in getting ready for Jillian Robertson? You know, uh, even with this injury, I still was done wrestling, jiu-jitsu, sparring, so that's little bit affect me, but I still believe in my skills. I still believe in myself and I still believe that I can win this fight because still we, we done a good camp. And even with this injury, I still was sparring, wrestling, and I was doing good. I was sparring with very strong wrestlers and jujitsu guys. And even if in the beginning of camp, they all submit me, wrestle me, I can do anything. 
I was even like really upset. I was thinking it's never change. I'm going to be like this all the time. But one moment is just start, I start changing. I start escape from back, escape from submission. I never can escape. And I just get better because no matter on injury, I keep training. I keep getting stronger and I became a stronger. And next weekend, I want to just comb and show what I get. And doesn't matter. This injury doesn't matter. I still can fight and I still will fight. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Now, you you mentioned feeling like you needed to work on your wrestling and needing to work on your jiu-jitsu. Was that in preparation specifically for Jillian Robertson, or was that something you came out of the Mirage fight feeling like you needed to add? What what sort of led to you, you know, putting that emphasis on your training? Uh, that's just, I think that Jillian, she like more wrestler and grappler. That's her power. Like my striking, I think my striking will be better than hers. And she, like, obviously she watched my fight with Maros and she see that Maros was doing, and I think she'll have the same strategy. And this cage wrestling, that was my weak spot because even last fight, I was close to the cage. I was taken down and said me, that's me and my weak place is wrestling and jujitsu. And of course, all this camp, I trying to make it better. And... Also in stance, we doing a lot of um, tricks. We'll try to keep fighting stance because of course I want to keep fighting stance. I don't want to like jujitsu with Jillian, your cuddle throats, very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, I want to stay in stance, but I know she'll trying to take me down. And that's what we're working on. Stay at the stance and not let her take me down. But if it happens, we're ready to my jujitsu get much better. And I believe in my skills and in myself. Well, we're looking forward to seeing all of that development. Now, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit off the topic of the fight. I I'm a big fan of listening to people tell me the, the origin of their fight nicknames. And, you know, I just noticed going into that last fight for you, for the first time ever, I saw a fight nickname next to your name. It said Maria the Demon Slayer Agapova. What sort of led you to start adding that to your name? And, and what did it come from? Uh, you know, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I think I want to change this nickname on Bouncer because I'm not Demon Slayer no more. I'm <laughs> Bouncer. I was worked like Bouncer already two months, and I'm f Bouncer right now. I'm not Demon Slayer. No <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll keep a lookout for that nickname change. Now, uh, I, also, obviously, you know, like, I have to ask about, you know, the, the current events, the stuff that's going on in the MMA world right now. You know, you I, I know that your origins at American Top Team when you first started, when you first moved to Florida and that was your first place to train. I know Amanda Nunes was kind of a big part of that. So I, I was wondering if you could kind of give us some of your thoughts on, you know, just how good she looked in her last fight. And, you know, some people talking about her getting that trilogy fight with with uh, Juliana Pena. Do you think that fight's necessary or do you think she just ought to move on with her life? Uh, I think that was an important fight for her because she lost and obviously she didn't like it because also she was champion, she was favorite in this fight. And I know that when you favorite and you lost, because if you favorite, people betting money on you. And if you lost, they all start hating you, write you evil messages and all this stuff. And I'm sure Amanda didn't like it. And she want to play back and show everyone that she's still champ. And she was working with my coach, Roger Kral, this camp. And he done to her very good strategy. Also, Roger, he is very, I think he's genius. And he have very good strategy. Even for me, he always thinking. Also, he's workaholic, and I like working with people like this because I'm workaholic too. I don't like people that they just want my percent of my fight and be on TV. I don't like coaches like this. I like coaches who dedicate themselves, like I dedicate myself to MMA, and I like coaches to dedicate themselves to coaching. And Roger is it's this coach, that coach, <laughs> who really workaholic and he really dedicates himself to his work. And I really like working with him. And that strategy that he made for Amanda, like he just was changing stance and Juliana wasn't expected because she wasn't expected. And all Roger drills, they was work on her and I was super happy. I was at my bouncer work. I would see them on TV and I'm like, oh, that's my coach. <laughs> 
So I, I've got a couple of questions to follow up with that. So you're, you're talking about, you know, Roger obviously having tricks up his sleeve and in, in special game plans that people aren't expecting. Are we going to see some of that out of you? Or are we going to see some things that maybe people don't expect come Saturday? Yeah, of course. Roger always do something that shocks the opponent, that the opponent doesn't expect, you know. And Roger always uh, trying to make some smart strategy. That's why I really like him. I really like work with him because he's very smart. I love that. Now, I also wanted to ask you, you said back there about being a favorite, having that pressure on you, and also dealing with kind of like the internet vitriol, the internet, you know, trolls getting mad when they, they've bet on you and you didn't win. Is, is that something you've dealt with a lot in your career? Have you dealt with a lot of people sending you hate mail following a loss? Uh, like, it's not just hate mail. They not send me hate mail. They just send me different evil messages on my Instagram. And, you know, I just realized you bet money, you lost. You better go work, not bet money. You know, that's not my fault. I lost too. I lost a lot of money too. You know, I'm really sorry I lost. I feel bad too, but you don't have to take this aggression on me if you lost your money on me. That's your problem, how much you bet. That's not my problem. I can control only my actions. I can control people actions. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you entirely. It's too bad you've had to deal with that. Now, let's pull it all back to what we, we really came here for, which is the most exciting thing, and it's you fighting Jillian Robertson. Like you said, you're going to have a few tricks up your sleeves for her. You're going to be ready for that grappling game she comes with. Give us a prediction. How do you see this fight ending on September 17th? I have no idea, but I have to win whatever happens because my life is fucked up right now. I have to have surgery soon. I don't have sponsors. I have no idea how it will work if I can't walk around. You know, I better win this fight. That's what I think. I better win. Well, we are looking forward to seeing that baddest version of Maria Agapova. Once again, fans, this is Maria Agapova who fights Jillian Robertson at UFC Vegas 60, that fight on September 17th. Maria, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.